Welcome to our annual film wrap up, where I'm going to tell you what our favourite and most enjoyable Asian films of 2021 were. Now, just a heads up, this is not a best of list. The movies in this video probably don't appear on any other best of list of movies. That's because this is a list of films that we at Asian Film Fans enjoyed, that we had fun with, or that we thought were so damn good we wanted to share them with you. We've got Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Hong Kong, Thai, Taiwanese and Indian films on this list from genres including action, comedy, thriller, sci-fi and animation. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and let's check out the Asian Film Fan team's favourite and most enjoyable Asian films of 2021. In between each movie, there will be an honourable mention and the movie that we thought was best will be saved until last. But I'm going to kick this off with a Chinese sci-fi action film. A man who has been searching for his missing daughter for several years is suddenly approached by a mysterious woman who claims to know where his daughter is, but in order for him to be reunited with her, he needs to do something for the woman. He needs to kill an author whose stories are affecting her boss's health. But the author has created a mystical, fantastical world where a battle between an unknown hero and an evil demon rages on. I love this film because it was very un-Chinese, a mixture of impressive special effects that looked incredible on the big screen, a captivating and easy to follow storyline, and an excellent cast of actors including Lei Jia-Yin, Hu Wei-Yu and Yang Mi combined to create this surprise packet of a film. While not perfect, and maybe a fraction too long with an ending that's a little nonsensical, it's still an excellent example of the types of sci-fi action movies the Chinese can make if they really put their minds to it. Cliff Walkers is a spy thriller that follows four Communist Party spy agents who embark on a secret mission but get found out by a traitor. They are separated very early on in the mission and have to locate each other to complete the mission while being surrounded by enemies on all sides. Whilst this might not be Yimo at his very best, this is still a fascinating spy thriller that has you hooked from the start. Fantastic acting, moody and beautifully shot as you would expect from Yimo, this is a film not to be missed. The action scenes are fantastic, but don't be mistaken. This is very much a melodrama and character study and a brilliant one at that. Fun fact, Cliff Walkers is the Chinese entry for the Best Foreign International Film at the 2022 Oscars, but was beaten to the Best Film Awards at the Golden Roosters, the Chinese Language Film Awards, by the film Island Keeper. Continuing on from the events of the first film, Patriarch George Cuddy must continue to outwit a new detective investigating the murder case of Varun, the ex-police chief's son. After managing to get away with the crime in the first film, a series of new clues and events repoint the finger at George as he works under the cover of darkness to ensure the crime he committed is never solved by the detectives. The first film was a surprisingly excellent family thriller about a father who would do anything to protect his wife and daughters. What I loved about this movie is that the original cast returns for the sequel, with a surprisingly interesting and logical storyline that continues the story of the first film. For three hours long, I was glued to the screen cheering along with George Cuddy, hoping that he gets away with the crime again. I am a train man. And you are also in Somali government jurisdiction. My jurisdiction. So you don't call the shots here. Now, go back. Akira Sato is back. Lying low after the events of the first film, Akira is pulled back into the underworld when a colleague at his new part-time design job is targeted for extortion by a suave gangster masquerading as an honest politician. As you can expect, some craziness ensues. 
This movie has charm plastered all over it. A cast of adorably lovable characters, including the bad guy who has a persona that you just can't hate, and a series of ridiculous scenes, including a terrific action sequence involving scaffolding at an apartment complex, as well as the crazy opening stunt, top off this real surprise packet of a film. This was completely unexpected, and this film glued me to my screen for the whole 130 minute running time. Being an office lady is hell. Now is just a simple OL working in a massive company when a new lady called Ran begins to work there. Ran quickly establishes herself as the number one OL fighter as she easily defeats the other factions. Nao and Ran become the most unlikeliest of friends. Ran is a tough fighter while Nao is meek and mild. But that all changes when Nao is kidnapped by the top OL gang in Japan looking to stop Ran's dominance. Yes, this is a movie about OL gang fights, and it's as crazy as it sounds. Fun, silly, and never taking itself seriously, this is something that I really loved about this film. It's as Japanese as it gets, where the world of OL Fight Club can exist in a society and no one bats an eyelid about it. You watch this because you want to be entertained, because you want to laugh, and because you want to be reminded why Japanese films can be so much fun at times. Thinking that she's disappointed her mother, Jia Xiaoling travels back in time to 1981 where she hopes to stop her mother from marrying her father and giving birth to her. Or back in time, she ends up slightly changing the course of history as she tries to set up her mother with the factory owner's son. But little does she know that her clever mother is actually one step ahead of her. This was an absolute surprise of a film and it was no wonder it was so successful at the Chinese box office for Chinese New Year. Comedian Jia Ling's heartwarming love letter to her real life mother has all the hallmarks of a classic tearjerker. With the comedy genius of Shen Ten adding to an already excellent film, this one really shouldn't be missed. This Chinese produced documentary chronicles the life, times and excitement of the humble Hong Kong stuntman, featuring stories and interviews with some of the most iconic Hong Kong stuntmen of all time, including Sammo Hung, Donnie Yen, Wu Ping Yen, Yen Hua, Chin Ka Lok and more. Isn't it obvious why I would love this film? A 100 minute documentary with some of my favourite Hong Kong stuntmen recanting stories about some of the most classic moments in Hong Kong action cinema. Part time sad part times are very exciting. I think this film is a must for any Asian action movie lover and I don't think I could recommend this movie enough. An unexpected yet enjoyable sequel to The Blood of Wolves from 2018, which, after its release, many felt would kick off a new age of Yakuza films in Japan. Last of the Wolves is set several years after the original, as we see Shogo Ogami's plan finally realized, as the Yakuza are finally under control, but the release of rival gang members Ubayashi, a crazy hardened criminal, is set to change all of that. The original film was laden with awards after its release, and if I'm honest, the announcement of a sequel had me a little worried. Very rarely is a sequel even close to the quality of the original, but surprisingly, Last of the Wolves arguably surpasses the original as a high quality bloody fun, but long two and a half hours ride. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll recommend catching up with the original film before sitting back for this stylish, violent Yakuza thriller. A young girl takes up a job at a huge mansion of a rich Thai family. But the longer she stays there, the more creepier it gets for her as she sees visions of a ghost of the previous maid who served the family. There's a key reason why I love this film. Well, two reasons. The first is Ploy Sanan, who plays in the main role of the film. She is perfect as the frightened maid who is being haunted by a ghost. But the real reason I love this film is the absolutely insane final third of the film that's completely unexpected completely surprising, and all round, just completely awesome. Part horror, part thriller, this movie was one of the surprises of 2021. The story of Najjar has been told dozens and dozens of times, but it's never been told like this. Light Chaser Studio decided to reboot the story for the modern times, and now Najjar is an angst-riddled teen in an art deco steampunk world, using his motorbike to battle a rich kid who's the reincarnation of our being. It's insane, it's exciting, and it works. Chinese animation has improved in leaps and bounds over the last five years, with 2019's Najjar Birth of the Demon Child being almost indistinguishable from most modern Pixar classics. And while this movie is not at that level, with a more simplistic and anime-inspired art style, it has allowed the creator to make a movie with fast, colourful action scenes that looked incredible on the big screen. And that's the reason why I love this film. It rebooted a classic story with a modern feeling and succeeded, transcending cultural barriers. A classic tale of revenge, and easily the best Asian action film of 2021, Donnie Yen and Nicholas T team up for the last time with the late Benny Chan to create what could simply be described as a modern Asian action masterpiece. Yen plays Bong, a cop who must stop his old partner No, played by T, who's after revenge against the people who wronged him. Taking inspiration from classic Hong Kong and American action films, including a shootout that reminds many people of Heat. This two hour long movie is really only let down by some pacing inconsistencies and its insistence on constantly providing flashbacks to fill in the story gaps. It didn't need it though. The action was more than enough for most of us and was a reminder that co-production action crime movies can actually be enjoyable when the right people are behind the camera. The fourth and the final film in the live action series which many claim as being one of the best ever anime adaptations. The final sees Kenshin's past catch up with him as he is hunted down by Enishi Yukishiro who is looking for revenge after the death of his sister Tomoe Yukishiro. The beginning rewinds and takes us back to the beginning. It tells us the story of how Kenshin, then known as Batosai the Manslayer, met Tomoe Yukishiro and changed his world. The Kenshin live adaptation films finish with two very different films. Whilst the final is a straightforward action-focused adventure and conclusion to the story, the beginning plays out much more like a dark love story drama which focuses on Kenshin and Tomoe and betrayal. The beginning is a great adaptation of the OVA Trust and Betrayal. Long-term fans will be satisfied with the conclusion to what is arguably the best live-action anime adaptation series. 
知情人创办人王世忠先生凌晨在家中遭到杀害。根据这份遗嘱，继承第一兄弟是李燕，说那间屋子里还有别人。除了李燕之外，还有第二个继承人。回答出了这样的，知道吗？他就是被你害死的。他有最强烈的杀人动机和最完整的杀人手法。Din and his childhood friend Lena drifted apart when Lena's father moves them out of the slums and into a new luxury lifestyle. Desperate to reconnect with her, Din stumbles across a pink wish dragon who grants him three wishes. Thinking it will be an easy three wishes to grant, the wish dragon is taken by surprise and at times frustration by the path Din takes to get what he wants. This American Chinese co production very much has a Chinese vibe all over it and shares many parallels with the classic tale of Aladdin. The Chinese language version even features Jackie Chan as the voice of Long, the dragon. This is a delightful family film that can be enjoyed by all ages, and combining the powers of both American and Chinese animation houses has resulted in one of the most entertaining and colorful animation films of 2021. Set between 1999 and 2019, Yakuza and the Family follows Kenji Yamamoto and his experience in the crime world. And his close relationship with gang boss Hiroshi Shibasaki. After the death of his father, gang boss Shibasaki takes in Kenji, and the two build a very close relationship, akin to a father and son, with Kenji sacrificing everything for the family. What starts as a typical Yakuza film soon turns into a character focused drama about Kenji's growth and relationship with Hiroshi, as well as a realistic portrayal of Yakuza life in modern Japan. The film focuses very much on the new anti gangster laws of Japan. This is not an action film, but is a drama about the real world struggles of the Japanese Yakuza in the face of this new world. Limbo is easily the best Asian film of 2021, and the one film on this list that I enjoyed the most. Limbo tells the tale of a veteran cop, Cham, played by Gordon Lamb. Who partners with a rookie cop to catch a serial killer that's terrorizing women in Hong Kong? While investigating, Cham crosses paths with a woman called Wong To, who was responsible for the death of his wife and child. Cham must battle putting aside his feelings to work with Wong and uncover the identity of the serial killer. An absolutely breathtaking film that's presented in gorgeous black and white, from the twisted mind of one of Hong Kong's best, Soi Chung. Two outstanding performances make this film. First from Gordon Lamb in the role of his career, and the other from Sia Liu, who plays Wong. She gets beaten, thrown around, and abused by Lamb's character in what can only be described as a knockout performance. At times, a very tough movie to watch. The black and white presentation reduces the impact of the violence, giving the movie a very noir style that suits it perfectly. I know I've said this a lot already, but this one really shouldn't be missed. So, this was our list of favorite and enjoyable Asian films from 2021. What did we get right and what did we get wrong? This list is missing a few films, most likely because we haven't seen them yet. Leave us a comment below with your favorite film of 2021, and we'll see you in the next video.